one. Hey, good morning, everybody. Kenny Lamons here with Medicare Millennials, the YouTube channel for Medicare agents. Today, I've got a very special guest. I have been waiting quite a long time for the opportunity to do this. I am here with Mr. David Duford. Say hello, David. Hello. How you guys doing? Thanks, Kenny. Yep. Glad you're here, man. So everybody knows your name and your face if they're on YouTube at all for anything related to the insurance industry. But if you go through the archives of Dave's thousands of videos, there's maybe a handful where he is not the one doing the interviewing. So he's a very skilled interviewer, has interviewed tons and tons of people. Um, but I wanted to turn the tables a little bit and just pick his brain, ask him a few questions. Um, but before we do that, Dave, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing right now, what your focus sure. is. Sure. Sure. So um, I'm... I run a national agency. I recruit agents to sell final expense predominantly, but also in a growing capacity, Medicare, as well as annuities. Um, I've always differentiated my agency on the value of training and support and mentorship, as well as effective sales and marketing systems and less on the Kool-Aid drinking and hype so common in this multi-level marketing cult-like culture that a lot of organizations have. Yep. And um, my strategy always has been to keep the agent first and foremost, to help them succeed, to give them the tools to empower themselves. And uh, it's worked quite well for me uh, in, in the years that I've done this since starting in 2011 as an agent, then my agency in 2014-ish uh, up to present day. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that can attest that you, uh, you do provide what you preach right there. So that's, that's great. I thought it would be interesting uh, to share if you remember, if not, I'll, I'll share it. But do you remember how we met and then kind of just how our relationship has developed? Of course, I knew who you were since I started in the business in 2015 from your YouTube channel. Um, but, but we did meet for the first time and our relationship kind of took off from there. Do you remember that? Yeah, we were drunk on a patio in <laughs> Vegas, right? <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> What stays, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Absolutely. Yep. We don't have to get into the details. Yeah, that was really cool, though. I think that it's a good point to bring up before we jump into your story. Just that, um, you know, we we now have a really good relationship, both professionally and I would argue, you know, where although we've at, we'd, we've never hung out in person since then, you know, I would call you a friend. And, and it's definitely been valuable for me professionally. But we were at a, um, you know, a uh, what do you call it? Like a, not a seminar. Well, it was digital mastermind, the, the mm -hmm. life insurance. What do you call that? A uh, life insurance conference. mastermind that's conference. Right. A conference. Best one in the business, guys. If you go to any of those in person, that's the best one to go to. Yeah. Speaking of which, that exact same one is in Austin, Texas this year, next month, and there's still tickets available. If you're interested, quick plug for De uh, Jeff Root here. That is in the middle of May, and it's called the digital life insurance mastermind if you google yeah. that you'll get to the website with the info that's where i met dave that's where i made a lot of really good relationships i would say this is the best one in the industry based on my experience so that was cool that's how i met dave and and we kind of from there have, have uh I've, I've learned a lot from him and been able to develop a relationship so keep that in mind new agents yeah and one of the things i'll just throw in there i've, I've i'm if anybody watches my content enough i'm actually a introvert and working at home is like a dream come true but leaving the house you know not so much um this the one regret i have uh you know as an agent certainly as an agency is not doing more of these conventions um there's something that you can't yeah there's a serendipitous effect from going and meeting other people like you who have gone through the same experiences who are going through the same experiences and I never would have expected you and I would have met and Ethan as well. And I'm so glad that we did. Um, and uh, it's, it's just good too, because this is a lone ranger type profession. We're largely on our own. We don't uh, convene with other independent agents. Uh, just the nature of our business is we have no office or people that we usually you know, report to. So it's good every once in a while to go hang out with people just like you that can kind of share a lot of commonality with. Yep. Yeah, there's kind of two aspects to the value you get from that. One of it's technical. I mean, you're, you're learning from some of the best in the business normally. 
Um, but the second is just the relational aspect you mentioned, which I think is just super valuable. Right. So kind of jumping into your story, Dave, I, I had a few questions written down. I may or may not follow it, but um, before insurance, I'm just curious. And I know a little bit about your story just from watching your testimonials and your channel, but before insurance, and I'm not talking, you know, 10 years before insurance, but the, the couple years leading up to where you found an opportunity in final expense insurance, what were you doing and why did you transition into insurance? Yeah, I, I was, so I graduated college in 2006. I went to school at Boston University and I had no job prospects. I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, I didn't like the idea of working for corporate America. And I've, my father's an entrepreneur. Uh, my grandfather is as well. It's kind of in the blood. So I came home and I did personal training in college. I liked it, um, enjoyed it a lot. And I wanted to run a gym. That was kind of my goal I set for myself like the year prior. So I, I answered an ad in a newspaper for a, a longtime gym owner who was looking to an expand the location. And I went and interviewed. I killed the interview. It was great, but he didn't hire me because I was young. So he hired the MBA instead who was lazy and unmotivated. Eventually he quit and I took over and got into the uh, personal training business. Uh, eventually went on my own, separated from the original partnership I had to just run my own business. And for a 21, 22 year olds doing pretty well until the great recession hit. And that's when, you know, housing prices collapsed. Um, the stock market collapsed. People lost their jobs. And a lot of people got scared of spending money on things they didn't need to like personal training. So my business, it took a couple of years. By 2010, my business just collapsed on itself. I lost probably 40% of my clients. Uh, the ad spend I was doing wasn't producing the same results. I wasn't getting in the same amount of people. It was a grind. It was really depressing. And I worked every, I always worked when other people didn't work. So I was in the gym at 5.30 in the morning till 11. And then from three to eight o'clock every night, Monday through Friday, I didn't have a life personally. And um, it got to the point where I realized I got to do something about this. So um, at first I was attracted to day trading which is the most boring, unfulfilling task ever. Um, if you're good at it, kudos to you. But otherwise, it was just not for me. Um, and I tried getting a job as a pharmacy rep. That didn't work. They were just interviewed me. They didn't want me. And I got desperate. And what do desperate people do, Kenny? They sell insurance. <laughs> so I got an insurance out of just nobody was hiring. And I, and I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't have an angle to go with, right? You know, I didn't know where to go. And I stumbled across the insurance forums and I started reading posts, uh, kind of just uh, stalking posts, right? Um, uh, from uh, John Duggar, who some of you may have recognized his name. I've interviewed him, others have interviewed him. And he talked about how he bought leads, selling this thing called Final Expense. And, um, you know, uh, did very well. And I thought, hey, man, if this, you know, old boy from uh, Kentucky can do this, why well, couldn't I, you know? And so I jumped in with the same company he was with, and that was kind of off to the races. Yeah. So it, it was almost like uh, you, I wouldn't say you were forced in the insurance industry, but it, it wasn't exactly your first choice, like most people, right? No, I, you know, there's no sex appeal in this. Like, I, you don't go to a party and say, hey, man, you know what I do? burial insurance you know people like I remember my neighbor I told her that and she was like "Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, it's well, like hey I'm a used car salesman now are you excited for me something yeah I know right uh, you know there's no there's no clout in uh you know a person with the with the regular public selling insurance but I've always had this funny story. My wife, uh, she knows a lot more about what I do now, but for the first few years, actually a couple years, when I was mostly broke and trying to figure this thing out, people would ask her what I did. And she, and I didn't even know this, but she would tell them, oh, he sells Medicare to old people. That's what she would say. <laughs> and when I found that out, it was, it like crushed me a little bit on the inside. Yeah. I was like, that's what you think I do, you know, which I guess technically she's not wrong. But right, um, right. it's kind of hard to sex that thing up, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, cool. it's, it is what it is. You just have to not care yeah. what people think. Well, yeah. And that's good. I mean, that's kind of the lesson of running any business. You know, you always get pushback from family and friends. They think you're an idiot or, you know, reckless 
why don't you get a job with benefits and be miserable like most Americans? Yeah. See, but now, Dave, you can say I'm a YouTuber. Now that's sex. That's right. That's what my son says to me now. He's like, what is what is, what is your dad do, Dave? He's he's a YouTube celebrity. That's what he says. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's how he explains it. He doesn't understand what I do. And yeah. I, I have a hard time explaining what I do to people too, because it's yeah. like, I don't know a lot. Where do I start? And I don't want to sound full of myself, you know. So right. So walk us through kind of year one and hmm? did you hate it and stuck it out? Did you rather enjoy it? What, how, you know, there's a lot of stories. All we see is quick success and in insurance. And yeah. a lot of times that's a farce, you know, it really is more of a mid to a long game in my opinion, but there are exceptions. So with your first year, did you enjoy it? And how quickly or not quickly did you find success? So I, like I teach my agents, I think you should find some success, some evidence of success in your first week or two. <laughs> my first day in the field on the fifth appointment, I closed a hundred dollar a month deal and I was hooked. Excellent. I remember it was in Wildwood, Georgia on a hot June night inside of a single wide trailer. The doors were all open. The wasps were all flying around in it. The guy's dad died of, had colonial pen, died, wasn't covered, you know, was, was really upset about it, wanted to get protection and and I closed it and I was hooked after that. Um, I liked it. I, I liked it was different from personal training. Personal training is very relationship built. You work with the same clients for months, if not years. You see them regularly each week with final expense. You sell the deal and you're done. You probably will never see them again. So I like that change. And it was very activity driven. And so I, I did well right away. Um, but my, you know, excitement and enthusiasm for it started to wane as I kind of ran into some roadblocks about, I don't know, nine months in. I started deviating from what it is that I teach uh, and what really the fundamentals of this business are. I started creating a different um, strategy to market that was unproven and costly at a time when I had no right to do it. I didn't have the money. And um, even though I had the marketing knowledge, I didn't have the, the staying power in case my idea was wrong. But I was so sick and tired of running into deadbeats that wanted uh, Uncle Sugar life insurance, as I like to say, mm -hmm. um, that I was just, you know, motivated to how do I sell insurance just to people who want to buy it, right? Which is kind of a, a misnomer. You have to deal with the good and the bad of this business as a side note. And I tried it. It didn't work. I mean, it worked a little bit, but not as good as these boring old final expense leads we still use to these days. And um, was running out of money, and I had some issues with my IMO I was with. And uh, by the, the 12 months in, I quit the business. I had, I remember the night I quit, I called in the last appointment of the day. I told, I, she wanted me to call and confirm. So don't ever do that, guys. Just go do it. Don't call and confirm. And when she picked up the phone, she said, oh, I just had two agents in here, sold me a policy and I was crushed. And, and I said, well, your son said I could come over and he was interested. And she said, well, sorry, can't help you, sir. Have a good day. She hung up. And that's when I was like emotionally done. I divorced it. That's an interesting note. Um, as we know, Kenny, you get people who are repeat offenders, they mail in cards all the time. So these, these people mailed me another card like a year and a half later and I door knocked them. And the, the guy was out there and I was talking to the son, the mom lived inside and we were talking and she said, he, he happened to mention that mom, right? I said, I said, you know, we were, we were supposed to meet a year ago and your mom said that they, she bought a policy. And he said, huh? She didn't buy a policy. I'm like, really? Well, she said she did and didn't let me come over. And he's like, yeah, she's got an Alzheimer's. She's got dementia. Mm. It's probably just, and, and I realized like, man, this person who was losing her mind in this is a big reason why I quit. It wasn't that big reason. It was one of many, but it was the last straw. And it's, it's funny because you don't know everything. But um, anyways, um, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, so I just, I got to the end of that, that day. I quit the business. I went home. I checked my bank account. I had like $96 in it like, and, and like five credit cards maxed out. Uh, a wife who was pissed at me because I didn't do what she thought was right, like get a job benefits and then the son who's like two and I had to go tell her I was done I just I had enough I quit and, and I was out of the business at that point wow well that's tough um 
So I, if I recall correctly, you did maybe the more traditional route directly after that, correct? So do you think that when you quote unquote failed out, okay, and you deviated from the fundamentals, that that there's very many other agents who will have the opera like like you did to get back into the business? No, no, no. Mo most people are when they're done, they're done. They've, they leave with such a sour taste in their mouth and their perspective was, uh, this business is a racket. You know, it only benefits the top. Um, this is about buying leads and then making money. This is a leads business, you know, in a sense of profiting off the sale of leads, not insurance. And people have a sense of cynicism, understandably about it. Cause many of the organizations, as you know, are devoted to those principles and, as easy as people come in, they go. And, and I got lucky. I mean, I, I think, cause I've, you know, I recruit agents and, and if they deviate, man, it's, it may, it's still, it, it, you just might as well assume this is their only chance to be successful because most people don't get second chances in life. And um, luckily I did. So you took a corporate job after you failed out the first time, right? Yeah. And you disliked it. You, you were miserable pretty quick. Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I don't like working for other people. <laughs> it, was, it was my first like real job. I worked for a company called Airmark Uniform Services. Um, we're selling uniforms, right? And it was just, it was just, it sucked. Um, I realized and it was good. This is good stuff that I had to go through in my maturation process. But I realized like, I thought final expense was bad. But now I'm working for somebody selling a, uh, an inferior product, um, taking orders from people I don't really care for. Um, and, I, and I've got to go represent a product to people that I don't believe in. But I have to do this because I have to make money because I, I pissed away my opportunity and my, uh, uh, you know, immaturity. So it just, it was a good learning experience about what the other side is like. And for me, I can just, I can just attest for myself. I mean, that was worse than dealing with uh, a deadbeat selling final expense is this idea that I was going to have to do something I didn't believe in that I knew there were better options out there, but I had to toe the line because of, I just wanted to earn an income. It was, it was really, it was like, I don't know. I don't know if, if people understand this, maybe if the entrepreneurs do, but it, this is my first uh, route at this. And it was, I just hated it so much so that I was back to selling final expense like six weeks later, <laughs> part-time this time. <laughs> so when you got back into final expense, did you just kind of pick off, because you said, you know, within that first nine months, you had found some, some success. Yeah. How, how did that transition getting back into it look for you? You know, what clicked that you continued? Well, I knew... I had time to allow my emotions to subside and look a little more objectively at what happened. And, and it dawned on me at that point, I'd gotten away from the fundamentals and I needed, you know, that this was a great opportunity and I just, I just squandered it. That was the realization that it was my fault. It wasn't the deadbeats fault. It wasn't the leads fault. It was my fault that I own this. You own the things that go well in your life as well as the things that go bad in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and I realized it was my fault. It was my responsibility. And my vow was coming back into this that I would never repeat the same mistakes again. Now that I saw what the other side working for somebody else was like, that I was going to go back and do things right. Luckily, the company I worked with had a bunch of aged leads that were unworked uh, in surrounding areas. And so I got steep discounts for the leads. And uh, like I said, on the days that I wasn't at the job, I would go out and just work those leads two, maybe three days a week and uh, get back to door knocking, setting appointments, getting back to fundamentals, you know, and from there for the next year, it's exactly what I did. I bought direct mail leads, just like I teach, ran face to face appointments on the days that I cut out of work early. And then on Saturdays, I didn't have a life. I didn't see my wife. I didn't see my kids very often, but for me, in my mind, I knew that this was an opportunity that if I would played my cards right, I would never have to work for anybody again. Mm -hmm. I could one day achieve financial independence and freedom and really you realize the fruits of what this business has to offer. Yep. 
You know, I think your story is so excellent, Dave, because, um, you know, the way that you came into the business, you found success, you deviated, you recognized that and you came back and you really adhered to the things that any successful agent can attest is what made them successful. And I, I, I love hearing that story. You know, there's one thing, I think it's Cody Askins that says it a lot, but uh, if you just stick around in this business, you know, good things will happen. Life will get a lot better. And, and I do believe that's true uh, if, if you are sticking to the fundamentals, though. That's kind of like the second prong to that, right? Like if you stick around in this business, whether it's Medicare, selling annuities, final expense, really any line of insurance, particularly senior market insurance, you've got to stick it out because it's just things don't happen overnight. And you, you have to understand the fundamentals of the business. And if you combine those two things, the persistence and the understanding of fundamentals, which you obviously have done, I just can't, you know, I couldn't, I love this opportunity because of that. There, there, if you just have those two things, persistence and an understanding of the fundamentals, you can work for yourself, you can make excellent money, and you can do something meaningful. Even though it doesn't sound sexy, you know, I think you're a great, great, your story is great to sell that opportunity. Well, I, I, not to be a cynic here or a devil's advocate, but I can't help myself. This business isn't right for most people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that if you just stick around that anybody, if anybody just sticks around that they'll eventually get it. Some people never get it. And that might be the people in the audience watching this. It might not be, I don't know. Um, but success is extraordinary. Like it's not normal to have an experience success because there's a huge price to pay. It's a, a price to pay in relationships. It's a price to pay in the time that you would spend doing other things. It's a price to pay in your health in a lot of circumstances. And, and it's not all rainbows and sunshine. And um, that's why most people fail this business on some level. Now people fail because they don't have the right system. And there's certainly some truth to that. But I don't think that this is a business where somebody comes in, Kenny, and like it takes them six months before it clicks and they make their first couple of sales. Like the people who, like what you described there, I, I agree on the basis of they've got something, but it's unrefined. It's like a diamond in a rough. Like I look at myself that way. I made sale, I made a sale on the first day I was out in the field. I made sales every single week thereafter, but I still suffered from uh, mindset issues. You know, I was an incomplete version of what I would eventually be, but I had the stuff to be successful. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, and what is the stuff to be successful? It's more of a, it's more of like what's up here than it is, you know, it's not pedigree. It's not what school you went to, how you grew up. It's, it's your character. It's, it's your willingness to follow a system. It's how well do you think on your feet? How disciplined are you? And, and, you know, look, if, if everybody had that, you know, everybody would be millionaires making six figure incomes, but they don't, yep. you know, so this is, if anything, this is kind of like a, a warning. I mean, I'm just throwing this in here. I think this is a warning for everybody listening to this. This business is not supposed to be easy at all. It's supposed to be a pain in the ass. Okay? It's supposed to be a bitch, right? You should be glad that it is. You should be glad that it, it forces most of the hands to be washed out. Um, you need this to run a business successfully and be lucrative. If everybody was successful and everybody could get a grasp of this, we'd all make as much as Walmart breeders do. Uh, and, and it's good that I struggled. It's good that you guys struggled because a lot of people, they wash out, they, they quit and go back because they can't handle the stress. But it is the vetting process for the survivors. It is eventually, essentially the survival of the fittest. And um, anyways, there's my little rant. <laughs> no, that's, that's a very good point. It's very, that's wisdom. So, and hey, you know, I'd rather somebody hear that up front than uh, figure it out the long way, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I have nothing to sell you guys out here, except that this is a business that's worth fighting for. If you think you can do well at it, but by no means is this going to be anything, but absolutely the hardest thing you're ever going to do. Yep. So, you know, uh, get ready for it. So throw you a curveball here. I've got just a, two random questions, okay? Number one, and I don't, I don't know what, if you're going to like sharing this or not, but I'd love to hear it. And I think a lot of people would be interested. 
what are two of your main hobbies outside of insurance? So what does David Duford do when he is not working, which I know you work a lot. So what, mm -hmm. just two things you love doing outside of, of your business. I, I've, I always like activities that are, are inherently frustrating and really hard. And I, I mostly fail doing. And the two things that I do that come right to mind versus jujitsu. <laughs> I've been doing that for three years. I had done it a long time ago before I went to final expense. And um, I love it because it's, it's human chess. There's, there's strategy to it. There's a physical element of fitness. Um, and, and I've always wanted to be like a tough guy to some extent. So this allows me to kind of participate in that idea of it. And it's something that isn't easy at all. You know, yeah. it's very much like final expense. It's funny the parallels actually between something like final expense and jujitsu. You wouldn't think of it, but there's a lot. Um, the time it takes to be good, the discipline and that you have to have, the, the, all of that stuff. So jujitsu and the other thing is weightlifting. Um, I, I always, always weightlifted, but I never got anywhere uh, strength-wise. And I've, I've got away from it for many years while I was selling final expense full-time. And now I've got a little bit more time that I back to it. And, and being able to push yourself beyond your capabilities uh, and, and grow uh, in anything to me, that's kind of like what I get high on, I guess you can say. That's what I, I think is fun. So that's kind of, again, some, kind of in a similar vein of jujitsu and selling insurance. Um, it kind of is another variant of that kind of, what am I gonna do to see what I'm capable of? And how am I gonna go beyond that? Uh, through strategy and, and execution of, a, of an idea. So in a nutshell, when David Duford isn't punishing himself by working long hours, he's punishing himself by taking on challenging endeavors. Okay. It, basically, yeah. I'm, just, I'm a <laughs> glutton for this kind of stuff. Yeah, I can't help it. Have you ever read a book called Natural Born Heroes by Chris McDougal? No, what's it about? It, I really, th it reminds me of you, your mindset, the guy that wrote the book. He also wrote a book called Born to Run. Um, yeah, I remember you that one. Chris, you have read that? I, I, I've, I've heard, heard of, it. of it. Yeah. I think so. so natural born heroes. I think you'd really enjoy it. If you, if you like audiobooks or you read regular books, it's, it's really good, but essentially he makes the argument that, um, heroes have nothing to do with like strength and, and things like that. And he, uh, draws a lot of parallels between things like jujitsu and parkour and the Greek society where the hero was born I don't know why. Just keep that book yeah. in the back of your back. Okay. Of your head. I think you'd really enjoy it. It reminds me of you. Um, so just kind of to wrap this up, Dave, what got you into, you know, you're sitting there, you're fine. You're back in the final expense business. You're finding a level of success again, you're rolling. So to wrap this up, why did you start your YouTube channel? And at that time, did you think that, that, that you would really own a large independent nationwide agency or were you just dabbling to see where it would go? You know, what, how well, did this evolution happen? Good question. I, I had had my agency for about a year before I even embarked on YouTube. And, and the reason I did is because of what I originally thought was stupid. Uh, Doug Massey had recorded a video who also has a YouTube channel. Yep. And he posted it on the insurance forum and I watched it and it was really good. It was good content. It was helpful to agents, but it was entirely free without any sort of expectation to give anything to them. And I thought the, the knee jerk objection to that I had was why is Doug giving this great training away for free? He's a great agent. He writes a ton of business. Why would he do this? What does he have to benefit? These agents will just take it and do what they want with it. Well, I, I conceded in that moment, that that was the devil on my shoulder talking. And then I thought about it, and this all happened at that moment. Thought about, well, what, what, if, what if this is actually the best thing that, that could ever be conceived? What if this is actually genius? And, and I thought about it, I pondered it more, and, it, and I came to realize that my running theory is, is that skepticism and, you know, um, a lack of trust is endemic. It's a, it's a societal problem we have. That's a, a lot of our problems have to deal with that. And pe people want to trust. They want to believe. But it's harder than ever before. Um, and so in, 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 our, in the current state at that time in 2014 and 15, didn't play to against that. 
it supported that belief because everything was MLM, and just like it, pretty much it is today. MLM base, sell you the dream, the Kool Aid, and all this BS, right? Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I was like, man, that's not that doesn't have to be that way. What if we could come up with a way to sell people on joining an agency by giving everything away? Because in the process of giving away a lot of information, how could you not come to trust a person? How could you come? How could you not come to believe that they know what they're talking about? They demonstrate it, and then over time, as you consistently put out content, and people see over the course of years that you do so, people will be like, "Man, this guy! Not only does he know what he's talking about, he's got he's got years and scores of years and years of talking about the same thing, and and demonstrating success." And that is a powerful thing because people want to believe, they want to find a place to trust. And that's how YouTube, that's what was was my vision eventually was, I'm gonna capitalize on this. And I started off, I did a bunch of videos, ran out of ideas, got away from it for about six months, started at it again, kind of off and on again. And then I came back to it in 2017. I was like, I gotta make content three or four times a week, which quickly grew to daily content. And, and it's been the best single decision that I ever made in my entire life. I didn't know it would be as good as it is. It's funny, like there's so much that comes from this YouTube thing. Like I have obviously recruiting agents, but I make money off of ad revenue. Mm-hmm. I get introduced to people I would have never been introduced to. I have like affiliate deals in the works because of it, endorsement deals in the works. Like we sell products now. Like it, it is, it's incredible to think that this was just an idea at one point yep. and what it's manifested into. But um, I had no clue that it would get the kind of play that it did. And obviously, and that's what we all, a lot of us have these decisions where we, I think it was Charlie Munger, uh, you know, Warren Buffett's partner, you know, we're all, we all go through life and we get like two or three really good opportunities in our life. And we have to, be prepared for them when they show their faces. We have to execute on them. And I, I'm thinking the YouTube thing for me personally was one of those, you know, one of the few that I've gotten. And it's resulted in so much more of it. That's excellent, man. Your story is really great. You do a lot of good for the industry. I'm glad to call you my friend. Um, thank you for coming on the channel today. I told you I'd try to keep it a reasonable amount of time. I hope you guys out there got some value from this, uh, seeing Dave on the other side of the microphone, so to speak, getting asked a few questions. Uh, you, you guys, for the most part, if you follow me, you probably know where to find Dave, but Dave, anything you would share with anybody watching this as far as where to find you or anything you've got going on? If you're not subscribed to my channel, David Duford, put that into YouTube search and then just subscribe that way. I do daily content on all things insurance sales. And if you want to go check out my website, it's davidufour.com. Learn more about my agency. I've got free resources there, like a free new agent resource guide and a lot of different helpful information. Check that out. And uh, thanks for having me, Ken. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Have a great weekend. See ya.